What a great day for LSU football team. I'm so proud, and I mean so proud, to introduce Steve Ensminger as our next offensive coordinator. Steve's a Tiger through and through. He's dedicated his life to football as a player here at LSU and a coach all over the country. He's a great family man. His family's here today. We're so proud that they are here. He's a Baton Rouge native, and he's 100% committed to LSU. And I know that from working with him on a daily basis, for knowing him for a long period of time. But he's not one, just one of our own. He is also the best coach to lead LSU's offense in the next coming years. And I do believe that with all my heart, and I'm 100% convinced of that. On a daily basis, what I've seen this man do when he took over our offense, how he leads our offense, how he coaches, how our players respond to him, Steve Ensminger is no doubt, in my mind, the best guy to be our offensive coordinator. At LSU, we must and we will develop championship quarterbacks to be a championship caliber team. We have three outstanding quarterbacks coming back. They all have different skill sets. Steve is equipped, and also his offensive staff is equipped, to run the offense to utilize their skill sets. And you may ask, what offense are we going to run? Well, we're going to adapt to our players the best way that we can. We're going to put our players in space, put the ball in their hands, and let them make plays like Steve's did when he took over last year. We will have quarterback runs. We have two guys that are excellent runners at quarterback. And uh, we'll run from a spread offense with those guys, have quarterback runs. We have an excellent, one, one, in my opinion, one of the best pure passers coming out of football in a while that we signed here at LSU and Miles Brennan. We can have a short, quick, controlled passing game, slant, sluggle, sticks, throw the ball to the tight end, take shots, throw the ball deep, and utilize what he does best. And in my research, there's no one better than Steve Ensminger to be able to do this, along with the staff that we're going to provide him. His play calling ability is second to no one in the country, as evident in the way he called plays last year. His game planning, his work ethic on a daily basis, his ability to command the staff and do the things that we want to at LSU makes Steve Ensminger, in my opinion, the best guy for the job. He's a top recruiter, and I can tell you our recruits and their family are really, really happy about this hire. In fact, they always wanted Steve to be the coordinator. Our players love him. When I introduced them yesterday, our players stood up and cheered. I want you to think about 2016, the middle of the season when he took over, no time to prepare. He put together one of the top offenses LSU has ever had. We averaged 426 yards per game, 32 points per game. Check this out. We were 89% in the red zone, 89% in the red zone with Steve Ensminger. We had a great rushing attack. We had multiple individual and team records set on offense during that time. I remember asking him after the first game, I said, Steve, uh, do you know we set an SEC record in your first game? He goes, man, all I know is that we won. And that's, that, that tells me a lot about Steve Ensminger. He brings confidence, he brings poise, and he brings excitement to our offense. And I know he's going to do it again. I want to thank President Alexander, our board, and most of all, Joe Oliva for being with me 100% of the way. They've made every resource available to me to build my staff, and to build a championship program. I want to present to you a championship coach, Steve Ensminger. Wow. <clears throat> uh, you ever see me on the sideline without these things? It doesn't happen, OK? Let me say this, okay? I, I'm so excited about this opportunity, okay? It's a tr tremendous honor to be the named offense coordinator at LSU. It's a, it's a job that I have worked my entire career looking forward to. It, it's, it's been offered before, and, 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 and it didn't work out for me. And I tell you, my time being back here and everything else, uh, even coaching tight ends, uh, has been special. But it's, uh, I spent my entire career 
thinking about this opportunity, okay? Playing quarterback right there, right over across the street right there in Tiger Stadium for, for Charlie Mack, uh, I, I tell you, it's uh, – I knew that was going to happen. But you know what? That's why I chose this profession. I want to make a difference in young people's lives. 2016, working as office coordinator under Coach O right there, I'm going to tell you right now, it was the best experience of my life. Walking on that field, watching these players win, the excitement they had, walking off that field and seeing how happy they were, spreading the football around, and the tight ends and the fullbacks and the receivers and the court, just it's the best time of my life. I'm going to tell you that right now. And I know this, hey, that's what makes coaching special. We're going to do that again. I can promise you that, okay? My years in the SEC has taught me how to prepare for the SEC. I've been, I've been doing this for a long time in the SEC. I'm ready for this, okay? In the work and develop quarterbacks, I look forward to. You know, it's kind of like riding a bike. Hell, you don't, you don't forget how to be in a quarterback. You don't, you don't forget the three-step drop, the five-step drop. You don't, know, you don't forget how to throw a damn out route or, or a curl route or anything else. You know what? Hey, that's just part of being a quarterback, you know. And I look forward to showing these guys how to do it. We have a great group of quarterbacks. We have three outstanding quarterbacks, and they all bring something to the table. It's my job to develop them. It's my job to, <clears throat> to take what's best for each one of them. It's my job if they are in the ball game and we're preparing them to win for us, then I'm going to do what's best for them and put them in that position right there, okay? Coach, Coach Joe has put a great staff together. I'm going to tell you the first time we had yesterday to be as the offensive of staff and sit and sit down and talk uh, about our personnel and, and our philosophy and everything else, uh, I haven't done that and we haven't had a chance to do that in a long time. And, and I'm going to tell you what, I walked out of that meeting excited about it. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to say it again. I've worked all my life to have this opportunity, and I look forward to it. I want to thank Coach O and the rest of the coaching staff for believing in me to lead this group, and I will do that. The players, you know, when Coach O, when we talked about this, you know, uh, people said, well, was there any hesitation? No, there wasn't because you know what? I'm the one guy who knows these players. I'm the one guy who knows those players. I'm the one guy who knows our receivers, our quarterback, our offensive line. I've been around them uh, as long as they've been here. And you know what? I'm the one guy to lead them. They love LSU. They want nothing more than win a championship for LSU. Uh, we had a big, big meeting yesterday, and we talked about it, and it's all about trust. And it's all about me believing in them, them believing in me. And that's what's going to happen. I can tell you that right now, okay? I want to thank our leadership, President Alexander and Joe Oliva, for putting, this in, putting the trust in me to lead this team right here. Okay? Uh, it's, the last thing I'll say is this. You know, you, you never expect it. Hell, I'm 59 years old. I've had a great career. I've enjoyed the hell out of it. My, my, my family's enjoyed it. You know, just imagine growing up with kids and all you did was go to college football games, you know? Hell, they've had a great career. But you know what? Uh, we were laying in bed last night, and, and we were just kind of talking about this moment right here. And I was flipping through channels and everything else, and the movie Miracle was on. Everybody's seen that movie, right? And the talk, before the big game, the coach said this, great moments are born on great opportunities. This is my opportunity, and I embrace it. I look forward to it, and I promise you, we'll make this state proud. Any questions? Steve, on your right. Um, last year at the bowl game, you said that you know, Ed kind of had to convince you to do it on an interim basis. So why, why now? Why is this your time now? Well, because you know what? Uh, last year, I was hesitant because it wasn't my offense. I understood the offense. Don't get me wrong. I understood it because I've been around for three years and everything else, and I knew I could call it. Uh, I just had to tweak some things. So it's, uh, uh, I was a little hesitant to do it. But you know what? I have a year now. It's my offense, okay? It's my offense. It's my terminology. It's my, uh, it's my direction. 
and, and, and I coordinated for 18 years, and, and I was a coordinator uh, at Auburn for a while, and, and, I, and I've done it here. It's not the biggest challenge. The biggest challenge is the terminology and, and what you want to do with your team. And I understand this team. I understand what our talent is coming back for this team, and I understand what we, I feel like we have to do to be successful on this team. Yeah, Steve, front row right here. Under Coach Mack, you're in a two-quarterback system. Could you have a three-quarterback system? Well, I don't know that, but, but, I, but I'll say this. You know, uh, when I played under Coach Mack, I didn't understand it. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, he taught me how to understand it. I accepted it, and it made it, it was better for the team, okay? Uh, if we have to play two quarterbacks, uh, hell, I guess we'll play two quarters. I don't know that right now. Uh, it just depends on the direction we take this offense. But I do know I look forward to those three those three quarterbacks. I look forward to the spring putting those three quarterbacks in p position to be successful and see what they can do and whatever they can do to help us uh, be better. It's kind of like running the Wildcat. You know, why the hell do people run the Wildcat, you know? Mm -hmm. Because you can make the defense do this. Well, if we can put another quarterback in there and say, hey, we're going to make the defense do this and it's going to be advantage to us, we'll do it, you know? Uh, th those things have not been determined yet. Hey, Coach. Uh, when you see Alabama and Georgia play in the national championship game and play that kind of offense, what does LSU have to do to play at that level of offensive football? I, th I, think, uh, I think we have the talent to play at that level. I really do. Uh, we've shown that in the last couple of years playing Alabama. Uh, we haven't been that successful on offense and everything else. But, I, you know, uh, the beauty of it is yesterday was the first time we had a chance to get together as offense staff. And all we did, we spent the whole day yesterday um, – <clears throat> evaluating our talent, okay, evaluating our talent and what direction we want to go with this offense. We can take it any direction we want, okay? But the thing that I do realize is uh, we have very talented receivers. The, the strength of our offense right now, in my opinion right now, is our receivers right now. We, we, we have depth at receivers, which we hadn't had in the last couple of years. So, so I believe this. I think you watch that game. I, I look at our talent and say, hey, we have very talented receivers. I think we have to put three and four wide receivers on the field. I think we have to uh, be an RPO team. I think we have to be a, a more fastball team. I think we have to go no huddle. Uh, that's the direction we're going. I, I, I still think there's uh, – there's reasons to huddle and then get out of the huddle and go fast again, you know. But uh, that's the decision we have to make. But I do know this. I think we're talented at that position, and I think we have to put the best talent we have on the field, and that will be three and four wide outs. Hey, Coach, what's going on right here Good in the middle? How do, you, uh, how do you respond to criticism that says that 15 years in between play calling opportunities is too long? I don't. <laughs> I don't. I, you know, it's kind of like, you know, uh, uh, it's kind of like you just asked me that question, T. Bob. I, I had a guy call me last night and said, "You read this in the paper?" I said, "Hell no, I ain't read the paper in 20 years." You know, I don't read. I don't read Twitter. You know, I, I, I've I've seen uh, a, a statement by Booger. I think he said, uh, "Coaches are full of bull. They do read the paper." I don't read the damn paper. I don't read Twitter. I don't go on Facebook. You know what? And I tell my family stay off of it. You know what? Because you know what? All I can do is what I can do. And you know what? I can't let any outside influence say, "Hey." Well, you're not good enough, or you, you can't do this. Bullshit, okay? I'll, I'll do it. <clears throat> right here in the middle. Uh, you just talked a little bit about three and four wide, how the wide receivers will be kind of a big advantage next year, RPO offense. Can you go, I guess, a little bit more in depth there? The RPO has kind of been something that's come into football here more recently. Well, you, you look at uh, uh, my, my first year, that, my, my first game when Coach O asked me to play. You know, we, we had more RPOs in there. We, we've gotten, we gotten to sets where you know, we, were in, we were in regular personnel. We had a tight end and fullback in the game. All of a sudden, they, hey, we put a tight end over here, a fullback over here in Missouri. They had a corner covering our fullback, and we had two receivers over here, and they had a linebacker covering our wide receivers. You know, that's the kind of stuff that we need to do. But, hey, we can be in three wides and everything else, and we can still run the football. And, and that's – uh, you got to be able to do it all with everything. You can't just, in my opinion, hey, you can be three wise, but you better still be, be able to be physically and run the football and play action off of it and RPO and hit that guy right there and still throw the ball deep. You know, every formation we get in, every personnel we get in, I plan on being able to throw the quick game. I, I plan on being able to do the RPOs. I plan on being able to, to throw the intermediate pass routes, uh, to throw trick plays and everything else. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a fine line. Here's our formations. Here's our personnel and everything else. But you know what? You have to be able to do it all out of that personnel. If you're just, hey, with this personnel, all we're going to do is throw the football, and this personnel, all you're going to do is run this football, uh, and this personnel, all you can do that, defenses are too good nowadays. So it doesn't matter what personnel we're in or what. We're going to have to run the football. We're going to throw the quick game. We're going to do RPOs, and we're going to throw the football over their head. Coach right here in the, in the front. Um, 
the Georgia quarterback from November to January appeared, just as an observer, to get a lot better. When you coach the quarterback position, whenever there's press conferences around the country, everybody says, we're going to coach the quarterbacks and make them better. Right. How does that happen? Well, I think, uh, and I had a chance, a chance to keep up with that, uh, Georgia had a, a unique uh, – they had great running backs. So they had a chance to develop him, okay? So, they, you know, early in the year, they didn't depend on him to make plays. They had a chance to develop him. So he went through a whole season and got better and better, and, and the confidence grew and everything else. You know what? I think we can do that. The, the only difference between me right now and what I'm thinking, hey, we do have good running backs right here, we, we, just like in every other position. Uh, none of them have proven yet. They played a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what, our strength is wide receivers, okay? I think going through spring and everything else, we're going to put the pressure on the quarterback right now and see what he can handle. And then as we go into the season, we can see what he can handle, and then we're going to call what he handles correctly and hopefully let it grow from there. Steve, you've referenced the staff meeting a couple of times. I'm, if I'm not mistaken, you've coached under four offensive coordinators in your time here. Do you, you said it's been a long time since you've been able to do that. Do you feel like when you were a staff member that your opinions were considered? Uh, they, they were, you know, and, and I think it's uh, uh, the thing about it is, I, I think we've run. I guess it's been four coordinators, and and then we kind of, uh, I kind of got that coordinator position. We kind of took over that and everything else. But uh, you know, people say, okay, uh, how are you going to run it? What's your going to be? What's your terminology going to be and everything else? And, 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 I, and I have not even studied it, I'll be honest with you. I know what I want to do, but I haven't even studied our terminology and how we're going to call formation and everything else because I want our staff to be a part of it. I want, I want them to make suggestions. I want to, hey, are you comfortable with calling this formation this? Are you comfortable with this cadence? Are you comfortable with uh, changing our passing system to a number system instead of all memorization? So I want our staff to be involved with it so we're all on the same page and we learn it together. And you know what? Then they can make suggestions instead of me just telling them, here it is, okay, learn it, and let's go. You know, I want them to have a part of it. And, and look, yesterday's all day long meeting with those guys was amazing to me. I, I'm just telling you, I had suggestions come from Tommy Robson and from Mickey and from Coach Craig and everything else, and which was, which was great. And I'm looking forward to putting this together with them because it's, <laughs> hey, it is my offense. I will call the darn plays and I will lead this thing. But you know what? It is our offense, and they need to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, any questions? Coach, is Steve's uh, recruiting duties going to change uh, with this job? And is he, for down the road after this group of quarterbacks, is he going to recruit quarterbacks in and out of the state? recruit quarterbacks in and out of the state, and I will keep him in Shreveport because he's done such a great job in that area. Uh, he had Dallas before. Uh, he will not be going to the Dallas area. I'll put someone else there, but he'll be recruiting national quarterbacks with some help. Ed, last year, when you got the, the permanent job, uh, why not make Steve your offensive coordinator then? And then also the second question, did you any, interview anybody else over the last month for this job? I thought about it. Man, I did. And, and here's what I remember my statement. I'm going to go out and find the best offensive coordinator in the country. And uh, I did. I, I, I went out and I did all I could uh, to do the things that I promised the fans. And uh, all, all the while, I knew I had Steve Ensminger there, and uh, he was a great coordinator. And uh, things didn't work out, but we're moving on. And uh, I, I said to myself, I had a chance. I know the best coordinator fellow she was, Steve Ensminger. And I knew that deep down in my heart, and I've always known that. You know, I researched with other guys, and uh, – after my research, I still decided that Steve Ensminger was the best coordinator for LSU, and I believe that today. Ed, uh, why is trust so important with you? It seems that that's something that you really honed in on. Oh, you, I, I feel like uh, we're a team together, and uh, I totally trust Steve, and he totally trusted me. And uh, we're going to put a great staff around Steve. Uh, we have a couple more hires to make. Uh, really, at the wide receiver position, we're going to – Bring in another guy that's an expert at it. And uh, I think with the combination of those guys, uh, everyone on my staff so far I've worked with before, and I totally trust them. And it's a great feeling to go into work uh, when it's a great atmosphere and everybody's pulling on the same page. 
one team, one heartbeat, just like the team is. And team is uh, Steve is a prime example of that. As a follow-up question, LSU for the past number of years has been a little schizophrenic on offense when they recruit quarterbacks. Yeah. They'll, they'll pick a, a pocket passer and they'll pick right. a guy that's a, a right. runner. Is it important to, to narrow that and, and focus, have a focus? Well, here, here's what I want to say. We have a pocket passer right now and we have two dual threat quarterbacks. That's what we have. So we're going to fit our offense to fit their needs, no question. Okay, now, so you go out and recruit, and uh, you look at a certain type of quarterback, and here comes this great quarterback that may not be the type of quarterback that you're looking for for this offense. So I think you need to remain, need to remain open-minded, uh, fit the offense that fits the player's needs. Obviously, we would like to have a quarterback that can extend plays with his feet. Uh, we see that's what's happening in college football. Now. We're prepared to do that. Uh, we also see that, like Georgia, a, a pro passer can take them to the championship. So we're going to be prepared to do that because we have both styles of quarterbacks. Now, are we going to go out and recruit one style of quarterback? No, we're not. We're going to go get the best guy available to come to LSU and fit his needs. Coach, the players that are coming back on offense, they just spent the last year learning one offense. Yeah. Is there any concern of having to throw that out and then learn something completely new? Or are there elements of – what you were doing before that you can carry over to this year? Players are resilient. They're tough. And uh, Steve's an excellent teacher. Uh, his system is going to be simple to learn. And uh, it's going to be about fundamentals. And uh, I think that Steve is a, a, will do a great job in presenting his offense. The good thing about a lot of our players, they were with Steve when we had a lot of success here on offense. So he comes with immediate credibility. Uh, just by the way, we introduced them to our, staff, our team yesterday. Coach, on your right. On, on your right, sir, yeah. up here. Um, there was a report yesterday, for kind of a follow-up to Ross from the L.A. Daily News that you interviewed T. Martin. Is that? Can you confirm whether or not you, you spoke to T. Martin about oh, the job? You know, uh, someone called me. You know, T., T and I are very good friends. And I received a call if there was any interest. And I told him, although I do respect him, I do believe that he's an excellent offensive coordinator and is the next head coach somewhere, uh, that I had my guy. I'll all due respect with T. Martin. Ed, there's been such an emphasis on ball security throughout the years. Do you feel you have to put the ball in danger in the passing attack to have success down the field? Is that something that you're willing to risk, maybe to be a little bit more dynamic in the passing attack? I think you need to be smart. You know, obviously, uh, they, you know, some offenses that Steve and I have been successful in the past, it always starts with protection. Protect the quarterback, short, quick, easy throws, taking shots down the field. And obviously, the short, quick, easy throws are calculated. You're not taking a big risk. Obviously, you're taking a risk anytime you throw the ball down the field, but that's what we want to do. Yeah, Ed, what do you want out of this offense that maybe that you saw you weren't getting? You know, uh, you know obviously uh, – let me say this to you. I'm only going to talk about the future now. We, we need to score points. We need to score points. And a lot of times Steve scored over 40 points. And in this league, you need that. With the great coordinator we have coming back and Dave Aranda, I think that we need to play off of each other. We want to be able to be very efficient in the red zone. And I, and I said this at the beginning. Steve was had an 89% efficiency rating when he took over in the red zone. That is amazing for him to be able to do that. Well, talking to Steve, he has a complete package. He has a plan for every part of the field. And so those things and, uh, are very important for us and moving forward. Uh, he's adaptable. Uh, he can adapt to the talent. Uh, he showed that last year when he took over. I asked him, all I asked him said, Steve, I'm not going to tell you what plays to run. Just create space and put the ball in our playmaker's hand and let him go. And he did that. And Steve's a great game day play caller. He's not stuck on one thing or another. I think that's what attracts him, and, and he is the best candidate for this job. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys.